today is the day, as I'm sure you saw in the title, we're doing an Iron Flame reading vlog. I am so excited. I finished Fourth Ring earlier this week. Absolutely loved it. Just loved... I, I loved everything about it. I'm going to insert some clips that I have from when I was filming that because I thought I was going to do a 24-hour reading challenge that once again got ruined because I got sick in the middle of it. Uh, but I have those clips. I'm going to insert them here so that you can see. I... I just ate it up. I loved the chemistry between Violet and Zayden. I loved the world building. I <clears throat> loved the the whole setting of being in just this uh, war college. And it gave me so many, like, just the, the reading experience felt so much like reading Divergent and Hunger Games. And so many books that just will always have a special place in my heart, so I got that nostalgic feeling with a completely new book, which just makes it five stars for me, like, automatically based on vibes alone. So I... I loved it. I loved every second of it, and I put off reading Iron Flame for just a little bit because I just wanted to sit with Fourth Wing and enjoy that, and I've also seen some mixed reviews on Iron Flame, and I don't want it to... I don't want it to be let down. I'm a little scared. I'm a little scared. Um... But today's the day. We're doing it. I can't put it off anymore. I, I gotta know what the second book is like. So we're gonna go to a cafe. We're gonna get some coffee and some food as per usual uh, because I'm hungry. I want coffee and we have no groceries in my house and I hate grocery shopping. So we're gonna put that off for as long as possible. <laughs> so we're gonna go do that. I think I'm gonna try to make this spoiler free and then do like a spoilers section at the end. That being said, if you have not read Fourth Wing, a majority of this is probably going to be spoilers for Fourth Wing. There's just no way to get around that if you're talking about the second book, if that makes any sense. So if you haven't read Fourth Wing, I probably wouldn't watch this just because I don't want to accidentally spoil something in that book while talking about this one. So that's your warning. Don't say I didn't warn you. All right. Okay. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go get coffee. It's a windy one out there today. My hair, my hair's in shambles. Um, so breakfast and coffee have been done. I think I was in there for at least an hour and a half, I think. And of course, like when I was eating, I wasn't reading, but um, God, I did not get very far. Uh, I think I only made it 52 pages. Like the text in that book is so small and the margins are really small too. Like they're not wide at all. So it takes a while to get through this book, but I am absolutely loving it. I, it's just, it's so, so good. Sorry, I paused because somebody was walking right past my car and I'm still a little awkward about talking with people around me. Still so good. I love the character change in Andarna. Like she's going through her adolescent phase and they said it's like being a teenager and now she's just snarky and it's hilarious, like absolutely hilarious. I love that. Uh, I love the moment when they all walk back into like the academy or whatever they're calling it <laughs> because I have this whole montage in my head of how it would look in a movie of them just like swaggering in and everybody turning their heads all at once because they're reading the death scroll and they're supposed to be on it and Zayden goes, well, this is awkward and I'm just like, this is such a power move. Like I have the whole thing going in my head and I absolutely love it. It's great. Uh, right now it's really just sort of, she's kind of figuring out some of what's been going on with the revolution and everything like that. And they had to decide what their plan was gonna be moving forward. So they went back, they're at the academy, they're getting their orders as far as like, who's going where since they're technically graduated, which means Zayden is now going to be posted somewhere. And they also have to figure out what they're going to do with Dane. And 
Oh my freaking gosh, I just, mm, I hate Dane so, so much. Like, absolutely despise. I kind of liked him in the first one for a little bit there, and then he started getting controlling, and I'm like, mm, bye boy, like, hate you. Hate you. And it's so funny watching people's reaction videos, like if they're doing a reading vlog where they're like, oh, Dane is so great. I'm like, just you wait, just you wait. Ugh, can't stand him. And the fact that Liam's gonna be gone, I'm not happy about that because he was one of my favorites. Like, I, I physically cried. Like, I was crying when I read that part in Fourth Wing. So the fact that he's gone is just, just a little, just a little fresh. I'm not happy about that. But yeah, so 50 pages in, loving it. A lot of people said like it, there was a lot of info dumping. I thought I saw that anywhere anyway, and I haven't really noticed that too much. Like I think everything's been explained really easily and like spaced out enough that you can take it all in. So I don't, I don't know. Maybe we haven't gotten to that part yet. Like I said, it's only 52 pages in and I think this is a beast of a book. I think it's like 600, 700 pages. It's going to take me a while to get through it, I think. So we're going to go back home. I do have stuff that I need to get done today. So I might switch over to the audiobook at some point. We will see. So I'm back home and I did decide that I should probably do some stuff around the house. So unfortunately, um, so we're going to listen to the audiobook, see how that goes. I've only recently got into audiobooks, so I'm really curious to see if I like this one. I was listening to the Harry Potter one before and I do enjoy listening to that. So yeah, I'm excited about that. We're going to hit play. I think I'm on chapter seven. And if not, I'm going to be very confused. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to do some stuff. Liam's sister just got here and she's walking across the parpit, parapet. I forget how to pronounce it already. Mm. I expected it to go so much better too, and she's being so mean. Like, I get that she blames Violet for Liam, but like, he was her friend and like, it, it, it's not fair. It's not fair, and Dane's there, and like, I just love the fact that they can shove it in his face and be like, look at what you did. This is the sister of the person that you freaking got killed because you suck. Like, <clears throat> I wish Dane would just, I wish somebody would just push him over the edge. Like. Why, why hasn't that happened yet? I am not gonna be happy until he dies. That's, that's all I got for that one. That's all I got, it's all I got. And, but yeah, she's here. I really hope that her and Violet end up being friends. I feel like they will. I feel like they will, we'll see. Crap just got real. Crap just got real. Clearly the new like vice commandant, I think they called him a commandant, vice commander, vice something absolutely hates Violet. Like her dragon almost killed her. What the frick? As if things aren't bad enough, they managed to get somebody that actually wants to kill her in leadership at the college. Like, Shorty has enough problems on her own. Why is this necessary? I gotta say, these like high intensity action scenes hit so much harder when you're listening to it in an audiobook because like, the adrenaline gets put into the voice and it's it's like faster paced than what you read it and stuff. Part of that is probably because I have it on like 1.5 speed, but still, I do enjoy listening to those on the audiobook. And can I just say, I still do not understand the fact that they let other cadets kill cadets. Like, unless if they're in the same wing, no, not the same wing, the same quad or I don't even, I get a little confused with that. That's uh, never been my thing. Um, but why are we letting each other kill each other? Like, that doesn't make any sense. You're just losing what few people you have. And it, it, it just allows petty arguments to get in there. Like, I just, I don't understand. I don't understand. I also don't appreciate Dane pretending that he all of a sudden cares about Violet again. Like, boy, you lost your chance. Go away. Everybody hates you. Please. And thank you. He's writing her letters. That's mm, it's so cute. I love it. Zayden's just 
Zayden's so cute. He's trying so hard to, to like get her trust back, kinda. <sighs> now that I say that, maybe I should retract that statement. He is trying really hard to show himself and connect in that way. But he doesn't want to tell her everything that's going on with the rebe rebellion. And like, part of me understands, part of me, the girl side of me is taking Violet's side and going, yeah, you owe me the truth. Like all of the truth, all of the time. But then like the rational side kicks in too. So I don't know, but I love that he's writing her letters and just trying to like give little bits of his personal side and everything. I think it's so cute. I am officially done with doing chores, at least for now until I have to make dinner. And I got to chapter 12, which is about a hundred something pages. I forget, I forget how many pages exactly. So I'm going to start 109. I'm going to start reading my physical book again, just because I think I might read a little faster than the audiobook goes, but I'm not entirely sure. And I just want to sit down and read. So that's what we're going to do. about her signet and I'm a little surprised that we've made it this far into the book and like other than using it accidentally because she was angry about something she hasn't used it at anyway sorry I don't know why my camera wanted to play stupid there um she hasn't used her powers at all and they haven't mentioned practicing them either, which is really weird. Like, we're not getting a lot of the classes and stuff. Uh, it's just a lot of the pretty much power struggles between the people of the rebellion that are trying to, like, shut Violet up and Violet and her friends. So, like, it seems like the classes are coming second, and I'd like to see those like, I, I enjoyed that part of it, so I'd like to see that continue. Really, we've only seen them in the war class, whatever, I forget what that one's called, where, like, they get briefings on what's going on, and that was only once, and then, oh, I guess three, three classes, but still, like, it's only been one scene for each of them, and they've been super brief, like, it's not a main point, and I still want to see how, like, everything develops for them, so I do wish that we would get a little bit more of that. And just her learning to control her powers, like, you'd think that would be a really big thing, but it hasn't been so far. Good morning, it is the next day. I just got up, got a shower, as you can tell, and I think I'm gonna read for a little bit before my boyfriend and I go do some things for the day, get some food and stuff, so. But I did want to just update you guys. I made it to about 200 something pages last night. Not not very high, past 200. It's like maybe 204. Um, and I'm still really liking it. It's funny because as soon as I got done saying that I wanted to see more of her working with her powers and more of the classes and stuff, it happened. So ask and you shall receive, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I should have just waited. Um, but I am really enjoying it. We're getting to the part that I don't want to say like too many specifics because I think it could start impacting the plot and like giving away like just spoilers. So I don't really want to do that but it is it has been like following her trying to navigate school and her classes and now like, you get to see more of her trying to figure out her powers. She's trying to interact with Zayden while he's gone and um the the school's really not playing nice with the two of them as far as getting to see each other and the new vice commandant is just absolutely terrible. I think I hate him more than Dane, which by the way I haven't seen for at least 50 pages which has been a nice refresher <laughs> and yeah they're not playing nice which is not going well. Taryn is not appreciating the vice commandant and his actions so there's a scene where he just he's like you know what 
screw this, I'm tired of you, petty little humans. And he goes and he gets stuff done and it's freaking impressive. He's definitely like, I think one of my favorite characters, which is funny because he's, he's a dragon, he's not a human, but I really like him. He's like the, the like curmudgeon-y old man that has your best at heart, but is also just super grouchy and has a dry sense of humor and he gets sick of people after a while and he's like, sit back, watch this, I'm gonna go get some stuff done. And it's, it's great and I love it. <laughs> so, I will say that Zayden and Violet are starting to irritate a little bit because it's like every time they're together it's just an argument. And I get that she wants full disclosure and he thinks that it's not appropriate to give her full disclosure and Imogen actually gave her some good advice where she's like if you were with any other writer there would always be secrets because that's the nature of the job and Violet's just not willing to hear that and I just I think there could be some kind of compromise or something like that at the very least could we stop arguing about it every time that we're around each other like if you don't want to I, I, I don't know. I think she's pushing too hard at this point for something that she knows he's not going to give and she's not willing to let him change his mind, which is irritating. But yeah, so that's where we're at. 200 pages. I think my goal is going to be like 200 pages a day because it's about a 600 page book and it's just not realistic for me to expect to finish this in a day or two like I would another book. So we're going to shoot for another 200 a day. I am going to my parents for the afternoon, so a lot of it's probably going to be read either tonight or I might listen to the audiobook on the way there. We will see. So maybe not quite so many updates today, which I do apologize about, but I'll let you guys know. <laughs> I did manage to get 200 pages done yesterday. Like I said, I listened to a lot of the audiobook because it's an hour and a half drive just to my parents' house uh, to go visit them. So, you know, three hours in the car, I might as well listen to the audiobook and get through it. Uh, we are reaching a point that I can't even like say sort of a brief idea of what's going on in the book anymore because it's going to give so much away, but it has gotten so, so good. Like you guys, it's, it's crazy. Like just the stuff that's been happening and all this like oh, it's wild like uh, just reading it I'm just like oh my god like and then we got some new characters that came into play that some of them I was just absolutely <clears throat> just jaw dropped did not expect them really surprising so <laughs> that has been interesting it's added a different dynamic to it and everything and just the way that this story has progressed is I'm really, really enjoying it. I still really love all the characters and seeing their interactions and stuff. And uh, Violet's made some decisions recently that I'm just like, yes, that is the right call. Thank you. It's about time. Uh, not even just regarding Zayden, but just regarding a bunch of different stuff. So I'm appreciating that and that we're not just drawing. Like some books just draw out the, the drama for no reason uh, or the stupid choices for no reason and I'm glad that that's not what's going on right now so I appreciate that. So we're gonna see how much I can get through today. I do have to work tonight um so don't know if I'm gonna get through 200 pages today or not. If I do uh, it's probably gonna be at like three in the morning when we're not doing anything <laughs> and I am not gonna be able to vlog that but <clears throat> I will at least be back to give you guys some updates if I can't 
vlog during the process to get reactions. I am going to save like the last couple chapters for actual reactions because I have a feeling they're gonna be intense. And I've seen a lot of people say that the end really just shook them. Yeah, so yeah, we're gonna, we're definitely gonna do a reaction part to that. This is it. I have 25 pages left and I'm so excited. I, ah, it's gotten so, it's gotten so good. It's like every couple pages there's a new twist and like stuff that's just, I'm just sitting here going, what the frick? I didn't see this coming. What, what, what's going on here? Uh, so I'm really enjoying it. Um, I know I look like a wreck. I'm sorry about that. Again, I, like I said, I worked last night and I work again tonight. So I needed to take a shower and I got to do other stuff. And like, I don't have time to sit and do my hair and everything before work if I want to read this book. So this is the me that you get. And I'm sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. He's all cuddly today because it's rainy and gross and so he's like, I gotta cuddle. Except you didn't come to sleep with me today, so that's your fault. Anyway, we're gonna get back to the book. I, I got not okay with what just happened. I, I, I've got nothing. I got... I think I'm gonna have to sit with this for a little bit until I can properly form words. All right, it's been about an hour. As you can see, I did my hair because it's so cold outside. I refuse to go to work with soaking wet hair. It's just not gonna, it's not gonna be good. And I had the time, which surprised me. So we did that and I gathered my thoughts on this, sort of, as much as I possibly can, I think. And like I said, we're gonna do a non-spoiler and a spoiler section. So non-spoiler thoughts, absolutely love this book. Five star read again. I know a lot of people said that they felt like the book was a little bit drawn out, there were unnecessary scenes. I respectfully disagree. I think that there was a lot of building in this and I think a lot of people want like... I'm trying to phrase this nicely. I know there are a lot of people that are reading this that aren't into fantasy books. Like they're newer to fantasy because I see people recommending it as a book that's great to get people into fantasy. And I think the first one was the world building isn't all directly in your face immediately. So we're still building this entire world in this second book. We're still setting up the rest of the series. I think there's three more books lined up. So like, we're still in a building phase. There's a lot that needs to be laid out and established. And I think that this book did a good job of that. I think it, it gave us a good balance between uh, her in school and learning what she needs to do and then dealing with this problem that they've established existed in the first book and trying to work that out and then of course like new problems keep creeping up and everything and I, I think I didn't really notice a part in the book that dragged on or anything like that and I felt like the information that we were given it wasn't like drinking out of a, a freaking fire hose it I thought it was all some like easy to take in and I was able to keep characters straight and everything. So I didn't have a problem with that. I, like I said, I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed the amount of new characters that we got to see in this book, as well as development of some of the older characters and their storylines and their connection to Violet. I do wish that we got a little bit more be just because she's kind of 
in response to what happened in the first one, she's kind of cutting some people off and everything, and I wish that we could have seen that. Uh, seen her interacting with them more, because we, then we get more of those side characters and we get more of their story. But I still was happy with what we did get, if that makes any sense. Like, I wanted more, but that just means that I like them. So I don't have issues with any of that. I thought that some of the new uh, plot developments, twists and stuff like that, I enjoyed some of them. Some of them weren't like life ending, but they definitely changed the way that the storyline had to go. And then there were some that I'm just like, hold on time out, say what now? Like really good plot lines, in my opinion. There were a lot of areas that, at, especially near the end, that I'm like, all right, where, what, how are we setting up this next book that it's not going to be just another continuation of this problem that they have? Like, I, obviously I know that this is not a problem that's going to go away immediately, but like, how are we going to set this up so there's more to it? Like, what's going to keep us coming back again? And the twist that she put at the end, I mean, you saw my reaction. I was literally looking at the end of it going, there's more right? Like there can't, that can't possibly be where we're ending this. That can't possibly be what just happened. And yeah, I loved it. I, lo I loved this book. And that's about all I'm going to say as far as non-spoilers. So this is your moment. If, if you don't want to hear the spoiler section, please click off this video. I don't want to ruin it for anybody. Uh, and if that is the case, I thank you so much for watching and sticking with me until this part. Please like and subscribe if, if, if you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys again in the next video. So, all right. I feel like that was enough time. You guys all should have managed to click off in that amount of time. Here's the spoiler section. All right, we're gonna get into it. I, like I said, love this video. I'm trying to like formulate the spoiler stuff now and go back through the recollection of what just happened. Absolutely loved it. I really enjoyed getting to see her starting to learn her powers and everything and then the whole like them deciding you know what this is wrong that we're hiding this from our friends this is wrong that we're hiding this from fellow cadets and then choosing to tell the entire school what was going on and giving them the opportunity to come with was not something that I was expecting i figured that at some point she was going to tell her friends because she couldn't not like it was eating her alive but I didn't expect them to give the opportunity to everybody to come with if they wanted. And I loved that part. I loved that they reformed their own new school at, I think it's Eritrea, but I, I stink at pronouncing some of these names. And giving them the opportunity to continue learning, but also learn the stuff that they had been foregoing while they were at Bezgaith. Because they weren't learning any of the tears history or culture or runes or any of that stuff so they were getting the chance to learn all of those things that they were pushing aside because they were like the rebels and they don't want their kids learning that so i i really enjoyed that the twist with having the griffins and the flyers join them at the school was another one that i thought was a really good choice because it adds some more important characters. You get to see them learning to fight alongside people that were told to be their enemies and trying to formulate those bonds and relationships. And I really liked, I enjoyed that as well. Um, seeing Dane come back, holy crap. And not Dane, not Dane. We'll get to Dane in a minute. I mean Jack. Jack coming back was so unexpected, did not expect to see him. And then I was like, you know what, this is great. Like, Nolan mentioned healing a soul at one point. I was like, okay, well, like, he's back and Nolan must have fixed him. Like, he must have fixed that problem in his head where he's like, I have to kill everybody. So I was, I was good with it. And then all of a sudden, that's not at all what's going on with him. At the end, I did not expect that. I didn't expect anybody that went to the college to make that decision to become a Venon and I guess I should have like if anybody's gonna do it, it's gonna be Jack but I was so shocked by that twist. 
going back to Dean, I, like I said, at the beginning of this book, I hated Dean. Hated what he did to Violet, hated the choices that he made. But in this story, you get to see his character arc and his sort of redemption. And he gets the ability to learn that he made the mistakes that he did and to fix them. And I really appreciated that. Like, I, I liked that he was given the chance and it wasn't just a one and done, you screwed up, you don't get any more opportunities. Like, I like when characters get the chance to fix what they did wrong. And he did once he realized what, what he had done. And I like, like, that was great. I think that Violet's character is still just super strong and the stuff that she went through in this book to try and figure out how to harness her powers that are just absolutely crazy despite instructors that don't want her to learn how to harness her powers, the torture and violence that she has to go through in order to survive and just make it to a part, place where they can leave Bezgaeth and everything is just like she's a great character but you still see her make mistakes. She's not just one of these people that's all of a sudden not flawed in any way. Just, oh, she was brave and she was strong and she didn't even know it. No, she's not strong. Like, mentally, she's learning to be strong. She learns and she chooses to be strong every single day. But, like, physically, her body's not that strong. Like, the disability uh, inclusion in this... I forget what somebody told me that she has, but it's like a it's a thing where her bones are really weak and they pop out of sockets and they break super easily and I like that she's not the stereotypical strong female lead that has nothing wrong with her physically and suddenly comes into her powers overnight. Like she struggles to learn, she fights to learn, she fights to keep her body in check. Things have to be adapted so that she can do them and I appreciate that inclusion in this book and just the awareness that that raises to different things and on the awareness level I like that there is a main character like it's a side character like a supporting character but I love that her friend uh Jacinia signs like because she's deaf I don't see a lot of books with deaf characters in it and it's not overbearing nobody goes oh Jacinia is deaf because this that and the third happened and it's just you walk up to her and Violet starts signing and it says that and there's you move on and you keep going like it's not I don't it I don't know how to explain it it's just natural and that's the way it should be that's the way it should be and I like that so many of the characters in the book know how to sign and the ones that don't want to learn because that's not really how real world works a, a lot of people outside the deaf culture don't want to learn how to sign and like I took sign language courses in college like four classes I have like a certification but I know that doesn't even like skim the level of what I need to know for it and it's a very perishable skill but when I use it and people realize like that I understand some sign and that I can try and learn just the joy that that brings them always makes me so happy because like we tend to ostracize people that are different and that includes people that can't speak that have to sign and I think that's a problem and I really like that this book didn't treat it like that. It didn't treat it like she was any different as an outsider. She fits in, she belongs, and it's just seamlessly put in there and I, I love that. Like the inclusion in this book I think is great. <clears throat> I think about the only thing that I really didn't appreciate was the girl drama between Violet and Kat. I don't mind that she put in like some of Zayden's history because I like getting to learn that and stuff but I just felt like the unnecessary like they're constantly fighting each other and it's just like can we stop like are we really like would girls be this catty about this if this situation was happening if we were fighting constantly to learn to save our our families and our friends and our world pretty much from all this evil like would we really be this petty so that bothered me a lot. I just felt like it was unnecessary to put in there just because why not just throw some girl drama in there? You know what I mean? And so I didn't like that. And I guess that, that does lead me to, I forgot, I don't really like Zayden and Violet's chemistry in this one. I don't have an issue, like some people didn't like that there aren't a lot of spicy scenes 
I could care less about that. Like, we're in the middle of a war. We're not going to get that many spicy scenes. And I understand that they needed to be separated for a lot of the book because that's how it works with them being in completely different age levels and everything. So I don't have a problem with that either. I just didn't like that we spent so much of the book constantly just bickering with each other and not being able to work out the whole trust thing. I think Violet took it a little bit too far, but at the same time, I felt like Zayden should have given a little bit where he was always like, well, I'll answer if you ask the question. Well, how do I know what questions I'm supposed to be asking? Like that bothered me a little bit. He expected Violet to be able to ask questions and then was like, well, you didn't ask me. And she's like, how was I even supposed to know this was a question to ask? Like I, they drove me nuts in this book. And I was really glad when they finally sort of worked it out. But now we have this whole new wrench thrown in with him choosing to be a Venom at the end. I, part of me likes it because I'm like, this is a great twist. Nobody saw this coming. It adds that new level for the next book and him now, I guess, trying to see whether or not he can undo this or fight it or whatever. But at the same time, I'm like, why did you have to do that? You didn't have to do that. Like, you let that, that, whatever they call him, the sage, get into your head and tell you that the only way to save Violet was to do this and you should have trusted Violet to like hold her own, to figure it out. I did not see the need for him to do that at all. So that drove me nuts. But like, again, it's a good twist to throw in. So like, so yeah, I'm really excited to see what the next book brings. I'm excited to see where this goes with him as a Venon and if he's gonna keep it a secret, if he's gonna tell people and what they're like, what they're gonna do about that. I'm excited to see like if Sigil's gonna let him ride her anymore. Like, is, is that bond now completely destroyed? How does that work? Is he gonna be able to undo this? I'm really curious why Violet said that they are only going to be able to ward either Bezgaeth or Eritrea. Er 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 she said that they could only do it once. And I don't quite understand why, because they didn't get rid of anything that they needed in order to raise the wards in Beth as Beth at Bezgaeth. Like, I kind of expected it to be like a thing where the seventh dragon would that they suddenly realized they needed would die and so they couldn't do it again but that's not what happened like her mom died which mind-blowing there's just so much every time i think i'm done like talking about stuff like i can't <sighs> the sacrifice that her mom made since i just brought it up was really touching and moving and sort of drove home the point that she wasn't a bad character for choosing to save Bezgaeth, she really just wanted to save her children and protect her children. Like, are some people gonna find faults with that choice? Absolutely. But like, it really just drove home the point, like that was her sole motivator. It wasn't because she wanted to see people killed by Venon, it was because she loved her family that much. So I enjoyed getting to see a little bit of her redemption at the end too. There was a lot of redemption in this book, a lot of non-redemption as well, but some redemption, which I appreciated. Uh, but yeah, I wanna understand why we can't raise the words anywhere else other than this guy is now. And I'm curious to see what happens with Andorna and the fact that she is a seventh breed of dragon that nobody knows, like they, they all think she's just a black dragon. Like, so what, what does that mean? What new levels does that add to this? And ah, there's just so much, there's so much. And I'm so excited to see the next book. I'm going to stop rambling now because you guys are probably so done with me. If you've made it this far, I really appreciate it for hanging in there. Definitely go give this book a read. I'm assuming if you've watched this video that you watched the first one. I'm assuming if you made it this far that you read this book already, but if you haven't and you didn't listen to me and just listen to all the spoilers, still go give it a read. It's still so worth it. So much that I couldn't get into, so many levels and twists and everything like that. And yeah, I just loved it. So. That is all I'm going to say. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please give a like, a comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.